Houston, we've got a problem. Yeah, oh, wrong key. Shit, I knew it. I don't know, dude. It's He's the like, wrong key, <laughs> jackass. <laughs> but don't forget to hit record. Brad, it is yeah. really hard to find good help around here, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. It's hard to soar like an eagle when you're surrounded by buzzards. Uh, <laughs> at least it's not a seagull. Seagull managers are the worst. <laughs> 9JX2. <laughs> they fly in, do their business, and fly out. <laughs> Email from a female patron. Her name is Melanie Reno Keen of Leland, North Carolina. And she says, funny story. I'm single and ride a lot, about 20 K a year. This good looking guy in a group ride rolls up and tells me my bike is nice. And I say, so is yours. Wasn't me. I say, so (laughs) is yours. He had a 2020 CVO. He takes off his jacket and has a law abiding biker t-shirt on. And I smile. Wasn't me. The next ride, he brought me some bug slide and cleaned my windshield. Ah, that's better than roses. Oh. So now I'm dating him. Nice. He doesn't know I'm ordering a t-shirt so I can wear it when we ride, but he smiled when I told him I was a patron member. Could be true love, but if not, a great riding partner. Love what you guys do. Thank you. You know, I heard the law-abiding biker shirts make you 20% more attractive. At least. Dude, if you read that. If you read that email and you didn't know it before, wouldn't you think that would be me? Uh, Rolling up in a law-abiding biker t-shirt with no. bug slide and then trying to well, me, like, with the dude. I mean, come on. Let me back up. This good-looking guy. Oh, yeah, you're right. If that wasn't in there, how about that? Then, Maybe. then it sounds like me. Nah, there's right? the 2020 CVO. Yeah, there's a 2020 CVO. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're, I'm definitely not a CVO guy. All right. Anyways, dude, I just wanted to fantasize. All That's right, awesome. Let's do this. Want to ride longer? Tired of a sore and achy ass? Then fix it with a high-quality butt buffer seat cushion. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store. Check out our full line of butt buffer seat cushions. We got us here a genuine voicemail. Let's do it. Hey, Ryan. Uh, thank you for calling me back. Uh, I got your uh, voicemail. I got your email. Went on ahead and uh, bought the the video that we talked about for my 2002 uh, Road King. I want to let you know that I changed all the oils and uh, everything went uh, super smooth thanks to that video. Uh, never been much of a wrench, but every uh, every uh, thing uh, worked out just as the video said. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, so um, I just want to you know I appreciate that and I appreciate what you all are doing uh, for guys like me. Um, now I'm uh, looking for... Uh, for a video on uh, on rear tires, if you have anything that'll uh, help me uh, with removing the tires, that video showed me how to check the thread on it, and uh, I'm nearing um, you know the minimum standard on it. So now I'm looking for uh, possibly change that out. So anything you can do for that, uh, my number is. Uh, mm, thank you for the voicemail, Felix Lurch. I answered that email, you and did. I answered his voicemail, and. Uh, he was asking if we have any rear wheel videos. How would one go about that instead of waiting for my slow ass to answer an email? How would one find? Oh, Br- Brad Johnston wants to I, answer. I know the answer. To this oh, Brad, go ahead. <laughs> I love it. The very top of the website, there's a box called oh. search, and it is the handiest thing for finding lab content. Mm-hmm. It is a well indexed site that will bring up every video your heart has ever imagined. Yeah, I use it all the time. Sometimes I'll do a search and then I'll cut the search results and send them the link. And that's what I do. Yeah, just send them right there. Mark Arnold does a lot of that in the Facebook group. He helps out a lot because people ask questions that we did videos on years ago. And I know that's what he does. If you go on mobile, you actually scroll down on the mobile it's side of it. Bottom. It's at the bottom. So yeah, scroll yeah. down. But it if is you're a little on, harder to find. On it the is. Yeah. It is. I'd like to fix that someday. So it's uh, kind of uh, at the top. But uh, nonetheless, it's there. Very uh, good answer. There, Brad, right on uh, top of it. Dude. Well, you know, I told you earlier that when I go on that other forum that I'm part of and I post about once a month about the ignition fix, mm-hmm. that's what I do. I go to the Law Abiding Biker website, I go to search, and I find that video. Yeah. Simple nice. as can be. Nice. Nicely done. You know what? We got this all screwed up. What kind of, uh, I got a question for you. What are we drinking here? Oh. Because it's, pre- it's really good. Um, it's a little, little treat that Brad brought up. What is the it, Brad? Woodford Reserve Double Oaked, and it is a fantastic bourbon. Mm. 
It really is. And uh, you brought Brad brought this up to us today as a little... Um, kind of a housewarming present. A housewarming. Yeah, that's very nice of you. It's it's very smooth. It has a nice caramel taste to it, I would say. I like it because it's easy to find. It's yeah. not unaffordable. Right. And it's a very tasty little bourbon. Mm-hmm. Now... Appreciate it. It's good. Is it fair to say that it's has a like an oaky flavor or not? Uh, it's probably fair to say that. I think the caramel is more forward than I the think oak, so. but yeah. Okay. I expected but it each being of us double taste oak. different things. That's what I true. wonder because yeah. that's true. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying that I like it, but maybe I'm not the perfect whiskey connoisseur. I just like drinking them. No, well, what maybe, was that? Really? Maybe the ice though that's giving you that. The ice had a little frost on it so. mm. yeah your, your ice is a little freezer burned maybe and you watered yours down a little bit i gotta run the show over here i can't just drink over there like you two <laughs> i i got actually a bunch of shit to do here but being double oak I, I don't even know what double oaked means has it been in two different barrels i believe that's what it is okay is it, it's aged in a cask and then put in a different cask for a different flavor okay so. i i guess uh just in my head without really knowing i hear double oaked i assume it's gonna be you know twice as oaky right. more woody but it is super Woody. smooth, super smooth and nice caramel taste. And I'm a fan. I will be uh, adding it to my repertoire. I like it. Mm, should we get this episode started eventually? Oh, is that what we're here for? Oh, yeah, we should. This we got to do whiskey this. talk. <laughs> it is whiskey talk. Oh, yeah. Once you've had Rick Rack, you'll never go back. The ultimate motorcycle luggage rack solution. Forget those messy straps and bungee cords. Go strapless with a Rick, Rick Rack, Rack quick attach luggage system and quality bag. Head over to lawbindingbacker.com forward slash store. Check out our full line of Rick Rack racks and bags. Hey, Barcolic, Zero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Harley-Davidson brand new line for the all-new Honda Goldwing named Gold Strike. I like gold. Top quality, affordable chrome lighting and comfort products. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility Head over to lawbindingbiker.com for us to check out our full line of Zero 3D products. All right. Got a great episode for you guys. Mm-hmm. Going to have a lot of fun like usual. Likely get off track at some point. Welcome back, you freaking bikeaholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority. The Big MM, also known as the... 99%. Nice. Nice. Well done. Right on cue. That's right. By being here, by listening, by partaking, whether you like it or not. We know you like it. We know you like it. You're part of what we call hashtag biker revolution. Yeah, nice. Of course, as usual, before we get started, we do have just one question for you. What are you waiting for, bikeaholics? Let us take you on a wild ass ride. That's right. Mount up on the back of Brad's bike. Wrap your hands no, 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 around no. his lower loins. The wife's got guns. And <laughs> is there upper loins, by the way? I'm just, just, there... It sounds better when you say okay. lower loins, right. dude. <laughs> it makes it more uh, uh, sexually inappropriate if I say lower loins. I, I'm pretty sure your loins are low. I, I don't, <laughs> I'm not aware of having any upper loins. You don't know, dude. The nether Our region armpits. has loins. Ever. I don't know, dude. What if I said upper loins? Would you call me on that? Yeah, I'd say we yeah, 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 loins. Thank you. So I can't say either. Dude. You just say loins. <laughs> just say loins. All right, dude. We are here. I think Welcome we're back. off track. We are. Yeah, it didn't take long, did second it? Second episode always goes that way. Except after a long film day, second episode. Yeah, this is when this one's going to be fun. Um, welcome back, by the way, Ryan Erlacher here, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast, and your high tech redneck mm, up front new free video. And it is, it's actually just a little over a year old, um, but it is on the YouTube channel. You want to see it? It's one I just bought. It's titled, I just bought and rode my first adventure motorcycle. Am I hooked? Mm, yeah, I'm hooked. I'll just tell you the answer right now. But uh, I go through that. It's kind of a fun video. Oscar and I went to Oregon, um, picked up the KLR 650, which we've done a bunch of videos on it now. Rode it all last year. Uh, going out soon. Going to get back onto it here that the weather and things are getting less muddy up uh, in the hills and stuff like that. Going to get back on that, but uh, check it out. I will put a link to it in the show notes, lawbindingbiker.com forward slash whatever episode this number. Of course, you can use the search bar just like we always already talked about on the website. Now, we do have a patron member in the house, Brad Johnston here. And of course, we love our sponsors up front and all that, but these people are also 
direct reason this here episode is coming to you. These are some of our newest beloved patron members, and we want to thank them. Michael Cuomo of Pelham, New Hampshire. Tony Luciani of Merritt Island, Florida. He is top tier. And Michael Jackson of Vestivia Hills, Alabama. Kevin Ferguson of Branchland, West Virginia, who's top tier. Lane Gustafson of Arlington, Washington. And Matthew Leota of Perrin, Tennessee, who's top tier. Moving on with Leroy Edward, top tier. Gary Lofton of Olver Branch, Mississippi. And Ron Settle of Tuscan, Arizona. Lurch finishing it off. Larry Johnson of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Jeff Carter of Tolson, Arizona. He is top tier. And Richard Vogelange of Omaha, Nebraska. Mm, LawbindingBiker.com forward slash Patreon, P A T R E O N. Pledge a certain amount, purpose content, no risk to you. Because, of course, you can put a monthly cap. There are the benefits such as t shirts and stickers. You get in that private Facebook group, group. it's a troll free zone. Access to live video broadcasts and chat podcasts, early premium videos up on request, and of course, access to those awesome ride meetup and events like we're going to do here in 2021, heading down to Cali. And uh, back to Cali. Yeah. Cali. Mm. Cali. I don't even have that song key. To Cali. Yeah. To Cali. <laughs> Everybody thinks of that song. So in California. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah California. Ch- chili peppers. Mm. Yeah. That's true, too. He's over there Googling it. <laughs> mm, dude, I think the last time we did our, um, oh, there it is, dude. Right I there. think you did Snoop or Dr. Dre or somebody last time. Oh, you're California. right. Oh, you're right. That's the one I did. Yeah, I forget. I think I did do that. Also, you do California Dreaming. Is that Dreamin'? Tupac? That might be Tupac. I can't remember. Yeah, California Dreaming. There you go. Oh, yeah. There is a lot of them. We could. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Anyways, off track. Uh, yeah, going to California. Um, so main topic today, uh, Brad Johnston in the house. Um, we did an episode already. If you're listening to this one, we did it live with chat. Um, had a good time kind of getting to know Brad a little bit more, letting the audience, and we talked about a whole bunch of really cool stuff. But Brad's been writing some articles uh, recently for the website, which we very much appreciated. We've had some guest posts in the past, people that wanted to do it and uh, have you know something to say or some experience and stuff like that. We like sharing the platform, of course, when we can uh, uh, under the circumstances. And so Brad wrote this most recent article. And we've got, what do we got, two more in the queue, Brad? Um, three, I think now. Three more, okay. Yeah, I may be writing too much. That's all right. No, I don't. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) that's all right. We'll get them out to you. Uh, but uh, yeah, well, good, good. So there'll be some more articles coming out. But today's episode, we're going to focus on um his first article that we published, which is shopping for progressive motorcycle riding jackets and gear. My journey and. uh, well-written article, a lot of information. Um, and I'm going to let Brad kind of take it a little bit here. Now we test a lot of different progressive gear. And I know it's one of the things I think up front we can say, and I think, um, you're going to hear it from Brad and I hope he share, I know he will share his full experience and, um, kind of his thinking on it. And maybe some of us like me, um, too, can get rather obsessive about it and uh, it can become a little bit stressful. Um, I did it I, I'm thinking most recently talking about the KLR video because um, I do a lot of the street stuff and and get the gear and test it and you know and all that kind of stuff. But when I got into the adventure riding, whole new world. Oh God, I about tore my little hair I have out, and uh, um, so I can see. You know, there's so we're in a day and age where there's so much Too many available. Choices. It really, have you gone full neon? Are you the, the true yeah. ADV writer yet? I could not. I'm like you. And I read that in the article. No, I'm never doing the full. I can't do the full neon. Now I do on my police bike. I wore that. Yeah. But yeah. But, uh, that's cause OSHA will find you. Yeah, exactly. Down. Exactly. Yeah. There's reasons for that. No, I haven't. I went with pretty subdued stuff, but uh, yeah, I know that was one of the things you mentioned in your article. So tell us about this article and how you came to it and all that kind of stuff. We'll just have a good old biker conversation here about gear and frustrations and pricing and everything in between. Well, it all kind of started with a broken zipper. Yeah. Just like yeah. that. huh? I mean, Generally how most good stories do yeah, start. Yeah. Actually, a lot of them start with, there was a girl. Right. But right. yeah, this one's a broken zipper. Is that what um, you told uh, when you knocked your girlfriend up in high school? Is that what you told your mom? It all started with a broken I, zipper, I mom. tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> started with a broken zipper. I did, I, remember I told you there were some stories that should not be told. <laughs> well, that was Lurch's story. Yeah. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. 
Anyway, um, yeah, I was headed out actually right into the coast, and I knew I was going to be riding in rain for the entire trip. So um, I've got a good jacket. Well, I had a good jacket. Uh, it's the Harley FXRG jacket um, that I paid, I think, close to $700 for, but it's a, it's a true progressive jacket. It happens to be leather, but it has leather panels that will zip off. It has a thermal liner. It has a... Um, rain liner on the inside and i mean they call it the switchback this is it right here right that's it yep. okay i'm gonna share it with the audience here go to browser mode here so yeah. this is this and is it served me well i bought it in two uh, let's see 2017 uh it's been a great jacket it uh i was in a crash with it and uh, uh the elbow armor certainly uh did its job i'm pretty sure i'd have had a broken el- elbow if it um, wasn't for that and um you know, I, it, I've enjoyed it a lot, but that broken zipper, it, it was actually the, not the pull that broke, but the, the part of the zipper that actually zips up, it just shattered, just came apart in my hand, turned to powder. Hmm, you can't even get this FXRG. I couldn't find it. Nope. It's uh, discontinued now. Completely. So, That's what I thought. I yeah. Just they to make made sure. it in that version with the leather and another version in nylon. I wish I would have bought the nylon. It would have been a better jacket, but this jacket's been very good. And well, we're looking at Brad's article here. We're referencing looks it. Looks like there's an A version. Or virgin. Ah, uh, the new one. A version. Yeah, FX. The new RG. one's very different. Uh, oh, the new is one's it? Uh, like a triple vented. Yeah. Like it's got uh, perforated leather. Okay. It's okay. just not, it's not a progressive jacket in any way. They've got another FXRG that, jacket that's also waterproof, but it's uh, close to seven bones. And yeah, um, 650. Yeah. So I just wasn't going to drop that right now um, on, especially on a, uh, it's a slim fit jacket. Uh, I think it's safe to say, and I'm not a slim fit person. So I uh, ran that into that myself. Yeah, that wasn't going to be an option. And uh, so I started looking and, uh, you know, I've watched a lot of Ryan's uh, view uh, reviews on progressive gear. And there's a problem because hmm. um, Lurch and I are in a different sizing category than Ryan. Yep. And uh, so a lot of the things that work really well for Ryan aren't going to work um, for people like us. Mm-mm. And um, no, the European cut stuff is, yeah. uh, it's, it is, I mean, it, for me, it's just not wide enough in the shoulders. I yep. mean, I bought a, a, a 2X Revit um, jacket and I, I put it on and it would fit me in the midsection. That was fine. But in my shoulders, it just, if, if I went like this, it would have blown the back out. Yep. So I started looking for something that was a good four season jacket and cause that's what I had. Cause you know, that switchback jacket, the leather panels all zip off and it can be a mesh jacket. And, uh, I mean, I've ridden with it in 105 degree weather and it's as good as any jacket will be in 105 hmm. degree weather. Mm-hmm, uh, right. It's, I mean, it's black. So you have that going for it. That's not good, but, uh, the whole front under the arms, um, the whole back is all mesh when you pull those panels off. So it's pretty handy. That's cool. I've never, yeah, I've never actually seen one before. Once you brought up in your article, it's the first time I was even familiar with yeah. this jacket. And it's nice because you can take a jacket with you on a long trip and have a multitude of different things. You mm-hmm. know, you've got a mesh right. jacket, you've got a rain jacket, you've got a thermal jacket. Cause sometimes if you're going across States and you're going over mountain ranges and, across desert plains and Mm -hmm. you could end up with a large variation in temperature so looking for something to replace that and uh looking for something that doesn't necessarily look like a motorcycle jacket um something that's four season um capable that has good venting that is waterproof um so i don't have to carry a waterproof jacket as well uh that has good zippers um and uh, there's a lot of options. Mm. Um, when I, you know, go to uh, Revzilla and do a search using the affiliate link, mm, uh, nice, of course, nicely done, Brad. The um, it's hundreds of things that are available. Even when you filter by color black and three um, X, and uh, it just it's overwhelming almost when you start looking at it. So you start narrowing it by mm-hmm. brands, and you know brands that you know will work well. And uh, there are some brands you can just kick out because you know, like Joe Rocket. I'm not going to wear a Joe Rocket jacket because even in black, it's going to be highly um, all kinds of logos on it, and 
just loud and obnoxious and it's going to be thin through the waist, thin through the shoulders, thin through the arms and not going to work. So you can filter some of those things out, but, but certainly I, if I, I haven't had Joe rocket stuff, but super like, it's like entry level, right? It's Pricing entry wise, level, right? And it's, yeah. And it's also like sport bike oriented. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Definitely leans towards a sport bike crowd. Yep. Gotcha. I, I had some Joe rocket stuff when I, I had thought my, you did. I did when yeah. I had my Honda VFR. Mm-hmm. Nice stuff, yeah. but it's, yeah, it's definitely sport bike younger crowd. Yeah. I, I was younger then. Yeah. yeah I was in my twenties. Weren't we all? Yeah. So, um, kind of narrowed it down to a couple of things. Almost pulled the trigger on the Olympia Troy jacket, which has these huge front vents and back vents and, uh, looked really like it was going to be promising. And I think it's probably a very good um, jacket, but then I started thinking about, um, the other gear that I ride with and how it's going to interface with each other. Um, for instance, I use a heated, uh, jacket liner. My heated jacket liner has a drop down um, controller that's actually on the uh, hem of the the jacket liner, so you can't use that with a longer, like a three quarter length jacket. So then that takes a, a lot of these jackets out, like the Troy. Um, and then I started thinking about the fact, you know, I wear a cut or a vest a lot of the time. Probably, you know, sixty seventy percent of the time I ride, I've got a vest over my jacket. So what good is a chest vent going to do me? So uh, I started then kind of narrowing it down, looking for things that had good arm venting more than uh, worried about the chest vents. And, you know, and I, and then you got to stay away from the neons because, you know, I, I've had a neon allergy since about the 80s. <laughs> um, <laughs> passed out colors uh, since Miami Vice ended. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Some of this is fun and colorful in your article here. Yeah, so, you know, just kind of trying to find something that was going to be a good all-around jacket that um, that worked well with the other things that I use in my writing repertoire um, was difficult. And so I thought I'd share the experience. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's a well-written article. It's up. If you guys want to read it, it's fun. But we're going to go through some of these things. Now, tell me this. I want to go back a little bit. Um, so you... We already talked in the past episode, you guys will hear it before this one, um, that you got into Harleys. Yep. Okay. And your first one was the road, Fat Boy. Sorry. Fat Boy. Yep. The Fat Boy. And uh, then you moved, obviously, he's got the 2017 Road Glide now. Um, when you got into, you were into street riding before, but on various models and makes of bike. When you really... Though, let me ask you this on your older bikes before Hardy, were right. you doing touring or you just, it was all local stuff or did you get any serious touring longer rides? Um, you know, like I remember riding from, uh, Yakima to Astoria on my little six fifty special, which was a treat. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's hard, dude. And it rained from about the time I hit white, the top of white pass to Astoria. So, um, yeah, some, some good touring like that. Were you and, properly geared back then? I was pretty well geared because yeah. um, I actually used to work for a store that sold Heli Hansen. Yeah. And so I had Heli Hansen breathable, waterproof pants and jacket that I'd throw over my leathers. And it worked out pretty well. Um, so, I mean, that was early 90s. And to have breathable, waterproof gear back then was pretty unheard of, I think. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was well ahead of the polyurethane taped seam crowd at that point. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So you, when you got the Harley, what was your first, as far as, what did you wear back then for like regular uh, riding? Did you change, so, I, my, I, what I'm getting to is when yeah. you got a Harley, did you change about what you needed or how you were going to ride? Cause I, I Yes. So yeah. I still had chaps. Um, I've had chaps for years, even mm-hmm. on my metric bikes, cause I had cruiser style metric bikes or chaps. I had the asymmetrical zipper terminator jacket, I guess, yeah, for lack nice. of a better word, you know, black leather with chrome mm-hmm. zippers and yeah, bro. That's how I started. I'm still hanging oh, on yeah. my, I sold I still, my, my crotch rocket my, with the Joe rocket. Uh, did you? Yeah. I threw the Joe rocket pants and jacket in and you know where I went? Right down, down there. Right down the leather store. Yeah. <laughs> got my down. chaps and got my leather jacket. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I've still got those hanging in my closet. They don't get a lot of use lately. Yeah, um, mine either. In fact, I, I just was noticing the layer of dust on top of that leather jacket, that Terminator jacket, and it hasn't been on for 15 years probably. 
but um, can't get rid of it. You got to keep it for. Uh, at this point, it's an heirloom. Yeah, yeah. Do you think oh, yeah. that's the majority of people that get into Harley? Maybe, maybe not now. Or Indian? Are you sure? Maybe not now. There's just so well, much. No, more I think it's available. that Victory Lane jacket, the orange Harley stripe mm-hmm, that yeah, says right. Harley Davidson across the chest. I think that becomes the new uniform. And yeah, I, yeah, I don't, yeah, right. Yeah, I think there's more um, progressive stuff available now. Yes. You know, there wasn't a whole lot. I mean, when we were first riding our Harleys. No, but did we ever even look for it? Or, um, or did we I think, did, I'm riding a Harley, and everybody I think got to wear leather. Probably, and, the, probably the latter. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You can say there's more now. Well, where did you well, go, though? You went more. to the Harley shop. Well, that's what I mean. I, yeah. I still think we, it. Yeah, there wasn't much online stuff Maybe that little then, too. leather shop down on First Street. That's yeah. Exactly, that's exactly yeah. where I went. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> First Street and Chestnut. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it right now, but uh, yeah, I always thought don't it was go to the other front. shore. <laughs> yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think there's another. Don't name. go to the Front Street side. No, it's well known. <laughs> you, you don't want to be there. <laughs> well, unless yeah, you, you if you want to be there, you can. But yeah, neither of you would want to be there. All right, put it that way. Fair enough. Yeah, um, things I learned. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Front and Front and Chestnut. You don't want to be there. Um, so, but I, I my point being, I think that I think it's still true. Even though we have all the progressive gear available, I don't think, because like you said, I think most guys or gals, they end up buying their Harley at the Harley shop. Yep. And then what do they do? Leather up. They go leather up. Helmet. Because that's, I still think that's uh, what people see a lot. Well, and I think of. a lot of it depends on your dealer. Yeah. So, um, yeah. like my dealer is getting a little better, but they don't carry much other than Harley branded gear and Dixon. Um, those are about yeah, the only two point, things you Brad. can get there. But like the dealer I bought my bike at, Paradise in Portland, has uh, a fair amount of Scorpion. Um, trying to think of the other brands they have, but they've got some of the more progressive stuff. Um, that's where I was first able to try on one of the Scorpion shirts uh, before I bought my uh, riding shirt. And uh, so they've got some of that in there mixed in, but it's a small portion. You know, it's like one rack in the sea of Harley clothing. But um, yeah, I think yeah. that's a good point that. Maybe if the dealership is more um, has more progressive riding gear yep. rather than leather, and I think Lurch to to key off what you said a little bit, I think part of your statement is true because yeah, back then the dealership that's all they had. They didn't really have any textile. I think not, it was a couple of years in. It was yeah. mostly you were shopping for yep. leather and and even. Um, Hardy Davidson themselves, you know, and a lot of teas that they're just a clothing company now. Yeah. Um, that may or may not be true. Uh, but uh, uh, even they eventually, it seems like, started transitioning into branding Harley textile right. type stuff. And I remember when I wore, um, well, when I started with this crew, even when I started wearing a full face helmet, um, there was a lot of resistance oh, yeah. to that. Oh, yeah. Um, and a lot I of name calling. A lot of name calling, <laughs> a lot of teasing, and I yeah. don't care. And now- I'm guessing they weren't favorable names. No, either. they were derogatory. <laughs> yeah, it's totally derogatory. And um, now, after years, because I don't care, I just do my thing. And I, always, I was kind of ahead on progressive gear once I started discovering. I was like, holy shit, there's a whole nother world yeah. out here. And why am I wearing- leather and heavy leather that's not waterproof and once i started i kind of got addicted as you can see from all the videos now i kind of <laughs> got addicted because it's so amazing the technology and a lot of this the last holdout on a helmet who was that uh the last holdout lee, lee. and everybody finally submitted and they don't care anymore and they realize once they do it they're like well, if you're yeah. touring there's uh, just no better thing than to get in a God. full face helmet yeah, yeah it really takes a lot of the um beating away from your face rider fatigue yeah it really reduces a rider fatigue because you're not getting wind burned and yep. ears blown out you're not sucking all the moisture out of your skin from yeah. the hot air and mm-hmm. yeah but yeah, if uh, you're riding 200 miles a year r- wear whatever you want on your head yeah exactly exactly but, <laughs> yeah exactly but um, if you want to ride 600 miles in a day you need day after day on your face day yeah. after day yeah exactly and and through hailstorms and um uh. but i i so Keying off that point, because I want to obviously get into the article and some of the progressive gear, but I think that it was, I mean, I just remember taking it back, um, you know, when I first got mm-hmm. that first Harley, That all I thought was Leather, shaps. German helmet. It, it, yeah, I started with a half helmet, and then yeah. I got my German helmet, which was cool as hell. I, I, <laughs> I'm going to get another German helmet just to have it around the studio, dude. We're going to put it up, you know, as a decoration, but uh, that or 
the the half helmet, you know, and leather coat and chaps. And I, mm-hmm. so I still think that's very, I think it's still kind of what a lot of people think if they aren't familiar with the Hardy scene, that that's where they're going to jump into. Um, you spend a lot of money on the old leather. Yes, too, you, you know what I mean? And not knocking it if that's what you wear, by the way. We still, a lot of our guys still, there's nothing wrong with that uh, if you want to wear chaps well, and stuff. Well, and there's a reason that, like the racing circuit, they still don't allow textile. No. You got to wear leather because it's the best abrasion is resistance available. It is because they're sliding 300 feet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree. The, the the race circuit does that because they are, um, but for what we do, um, there are options. Th- there are options. That are comfortable. And yeah, and the textile, as far as you'll slide, you're not doing 170 miles an hour. If you are, then you should probably wear the leather, full leather suit. But uh, <laughs> that's why they do that. But I hear that sometimes people goes leather. St- and you're right. Yep. You're absolutely right. If you're going to be sliding for long distance, it's at high speed, but uh, you're not in, in a, you know, you're going to slide. I don't know what the slide distance would be by the time you actually hit the pavement. Most, most of those, the, the progressive gear will handle that. You know what I mean? Yep. So, yeah, I just thought I'd take it down and see your thoughts on what most people may be jumping into these days. Doesn't sound like you really know Lurch. Well, I think it kind of depends. Well, I haven't been riding for a while. Are they already into textiles? Is this their first bike? I think there's just so many things. Um, what, you know, what have they been exposed to? And when I got my first Harley, I mean, I, I knew one guy that had a Harley and he mm-hmm. didn't even live in town. And so well, you, you knew then, me, that's it. Well, that's right. And then you I bought, had one yeah, before you, bought, you that's yeah, right. You right. bought yours. And then the next year I bought, mine and so th- the one guy i knew that had a harley was you and you had leather <laughs> you right, yeah exactly and, yeah sure and and i i mean i, I came may on, have even got leather underwear at some point you might have <laughs> but it was that was what you wore when you rode a harley you wore a half helmet and you wore leather so like i said i i still have my full face helmet from my honda it's up in the garage somewhere in a raw helmet up in mm-hmm. my up in the garage yeah but i i threw in the um the Joe rocket gear with a bike. Cause I knew I was jumping on a Harley and I wasn't going to wear that on a Harley. Well, and part of it's that tribalism, you know, I mean, we want to be like the people that we are with. Mm-hmm. So yeah. True. We're gonna, it's like, we're this gonna is dress what like they them wear. And, yeah. 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 And that's exactly what I'm saying. That's good. Yep. That's good. I think we, uh, yeah, we focus off, you know, the group we are about and want to be part of it. And I th- still think that's a big part of it to even to this day with all the progressive gear we're going to talk about here um, in this episode. I still think it, uh, uh, I th- still think a lot of people that's, that's their influence and there's nothing wrong with that. Again, some guys still rock leather, but I think for the most part with our crew, everybody aside from Oscar, but he's, he, but he still wears a leather jacket, but he's looking for a textile jacket because yeah. on our adventure, yep. He rides all textile stuff. Uh-huh. And he, fi- he used to tease me. Remember I was the first. That's because sw- he's no Jason Momoa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the jail pants that we taught. Yeah. God. Um, but Justin was one of the, he teased me for years when I first got my textile jacket. Remember? And now he, he realized he finally will admit uh, that uh, it, it's actually a really good idea. And they're so. making a lot more textile stuff that is yeah. street or cruiser. Mm-hmm. Um, in, uh, I don't know, themed or influenced. It doesn't look like uh, this one here. I'm looking at with yeah. The, that's not know, one of them. No, that's more of a that's touring <laughs> or a, a, a high neon. Yeah, oh, high yeah, neon. High that's neon, more yeah. of a sport bike or some kind of dual sport kind of thing. You know, and I think I should say too that FXRG jacket that I had that started all this with the broken zipper. Um, the FXRG line from Harley has a lifetime warranty. They're replacing the the zipper for me, even mm, though it's a yeah. six year old goat. So, um, you know, there's an advantage. Harley does have an advantage if you shop that FXRG line. Um, and yeah, yeah, you can't get that kind of warranty on any other gear. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Let's do this real quick. Ride longer and treat your ass with some respect already. It's about time. Mm, get hooked up with a premium butt buffer seat cushion. This company of bikers developed a super thin hospital grade sit cushion made of solid and elastic materials, and it's unlike gel pads that will leak if punctured. Won't leak. Mm. The butt buffer is designed not to slide around in your seat, fits all motorcycles and stalls in seconds, easily cleans up, and yep, helps to dampen vibrations. Make your butt feel good. <laughs> we should have put some butt buffers on these seats. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, we, we should do that. Put them in the podcast studio with plenty of models to choose from. They assure you. You'll have a comfortable ass when riding. Head over to Law Abiding Biker Store and check out our full line of butt buffer. Butt buffer. Seed. Buff that butt. 
<laughs> that's great. We need to add that from now on, dude. That was that was sexy as heck, man. <laughs> <laughs> Leave I it to we're officially off the rail. We are off the rail. We're always adding new stuff to our commercials. They don't get boring, right? Mm-hmm. You got to add fun stuff to your commercials. I'm so. just impressed that you do all the commercials live and that you haven't recorded any of them. Wow. Yeah. Did you know that before coming? I guess you did because you watched all the, the live. Yeah. 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 That's the interesting. Live read. Yeah. A couple it people have said that. It, I think. Yeah. yeah. Do you think I should record them or keep doing them live? No, oh, I live. do them live. Definitely yeah. live. It's more character. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. That's what I've always thought, too. That's what I tell the uh, sponsors. We like to do the live read. You never know where the gold strike's going to come in. And that's, yeah, right. that's right. You never know yet. Rick, Rick. All right. So anyways, uh, now that we've got, I wanted to get a little bit of that history and see what your guys' thoughts. I think those are fun conversations. Um, so we're, so you decided um, uh, you're going to go, for, you had the leather. At this point, the FXRG, it's wore out. Are you in your mind going, I'm going textile for sure? What's yeah, the I didn't even process? look at the leather jacket. Okay. Not a single How one. How come? I didn't even think about it. Yeah? I just... It There's was, no reason, but why would you... It was going to be textile. Okay. And what are the reasons? You know, I think it really comes down to it's... I knew it was going to be lighter weight. I knew it was going to be uh, easier to pack away because, let's be honest, I'm not an Adagat rider. I am not going to wear all the gear all the time. It's just mm. not going to happen. So, you know, when we're rolling down the road and it's a uh, 90 degrees, hundred degrees. I'm taking my coat off. And gotcha. the textiles ended up easier to pack up and strap in the tour pack or something. Um, so that's part of it. Um, and, uh, just, it's more flexible. It's more comfortable. You don't have that heaviness. Mm-hmm. You don't have every time you hang it on the back of a bar stool, it doesn't fall Tip over your chair. When you get up to go yeah. to the bathroom, take yeah. your stool over yeah. 80 pounds of jacket. Yep. Um, it's really nice when it gets wet too. Oh, that's fantastic. It's fan- then it's leather's about 120 fantastic. pounds of leather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember those days. Yeah. So, I mean, I was looking for something that I could put armor in. Oh, so you did want to go with armor. Yeah. 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 Like I said, um, I was in a crash. Yep. Had a 70 something year old woman run into me, um, that didn't see me. Imagine that. And uh, I slammed my elbow hard in that crash. And I just knew that if it hadn't been for armor in the jacket, I shattered, just shattered. Yeah. I knew it. And uh, so big, big believer in the armor. Um, little, you know, I keep trying the back um, armor. I've got it in my current jacket again, but it keeps coming out because I just can't ride with that back plate in there. It's uncomfortable with the backrest on the bike. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm trying again. I'm trying to be good. I know it's helpful. I know it'll probably save my back, but right, it's no, hard. Those are real, <laughs> you know, things that you, to talk about. You yep. know, and everybody's got their different mm-hmm. comfort level, and I get it. Um, but shoulder and elbow will always be in my jacket. I mean, it just is. It'll be there. Knees, if I'm wearing um, a pant that has that capability. So where'd you go? And then, so where'd you, where'd you start looking at as far as textile? So you're, you want to, and so you're leaving the elbow armor in. Yeah. Elbow and, and shoulders. Elbow and shoulders in. staying yep. in just the back. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I, right I now get it. The, the back makes it stiff. Yeah. And the back's in still. Right. Okay. We'll see if it stays. See, yep. um, I've got good back armor. Um, it didn't stay in the scorpion shirt because mm-hmm. I just couldn't stand it there. Um, yeah, didn't stay in either of the other jackets that I've had, but we'll try again. Yep. I spent the money on it. I want it to work. <laughs> right, I really right, do. Mm-hmm. right. You want to be comfortable, yeah. you know, and I get it. Um, there's a, a point where you're like, yeah, what, what risks are you wi- willing, yep. willing to take for comfort? Well, you know what I and mean? And that's all of motorcycling. I mean, motorcycling is nothing but what level of risk will you accept? Yep. Because it's certainly not safe. Yep. Very true. So where do we move from there? So I started moving, looking around, um, was looking for something that was waist length or just slightly uh, longer. Um, I uh, had narrowed it down to a couple, and then I kind of came to that realization that I needed something slightly different. And um, I ended up with something, but mm-hmm. that's another article, and I don't know if I want to say what I ended up with. Okay, but you went through a process here yeah. sticking to this article, right? Um, we can, yeah. Oh, so you wrote, yeah. See, I haven't uh, looked at the other article yet. So no, I haven't, I, that one's not quite done yet. Okay. I, I haven't ridden in the rain yet. Gotcha. I'm waiting for rain because it seems like I, if something is waterproof, you ought to see if it is actually waterproof, but right. Um, but so we, far, 
what are what are some of the other stuff you went through this article that you mentioned a whole bunch of stuff in here yeah so i mean um, i, I just want to go over like some of your thought process here because you I, I linked a shitload of stuff yep. in here that you talked about so let's go through some of your things you looked at uh if if, if you will if this makes sense to go yep. through some of the things you looked at and what you liked about certain things i can pull them up on the right. screen and what you didn't like so really like that troy jacket the olympia products really appealed to me um like the troy jacket a lot but the length was a little too long this is the troy jacket right Okay, I'm going to go to browser mode and pull this up for the audience that's watching the uh, video, the, our patron members. Um, the the vents on the front, uh, those two big pockets. It's kind of, it's almost like an old field jacket, mm. the M65 field jacket for those of you that okay. were in the army. Um, it, um, those big pockets in the front roll down and become vents and it's all mesh behind it. And the same. Okay. So same. it's like, like my, uh, jacket. it's like your Revit. Yeah. Like the Revit. Okay. Your I Revit see. pulls up, these pull down. Okay. Uh, kind of tuck into itself. Um, it would have been a good jacket. I'm sure, uh, is a good jacket for a lot of people. Um, I just, when I started thinking about wearing that vest over the top, it didn't mm. make sense anymore. Um, cause the arm venting is good, but it's weird. It's on the inside and it rolls down and, uh, I thought that was a weakness on that jacket. And then the length with my heated liner. Um, having the control on the on the side ham, I really needed to be able to access that. Yeah, so. and so yeah, I get what you're saying. If the jacket, yeah, you talked about that. If the jacket's too long to try to reach up and hit yep. your controller, yeah. No, the in the Olympia gets. It, I would say now, if you guys want to get any of this, the articles out. I put links in there, affiliate links in the article directly to anything that we talk about. So if you want to hit those links and get through to make sure that you're you're uh, at what we're talking about. If it's something you want to purchase, of course, we get a small commission. We appreciate that. But these, I would say the Olympia stuff, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I know Lurch has talked about in the past that it too, not like uh, Joe Rocket, but it seems to be pricing wise more entry level. Yeah, the pricing is very attractive on it. I, I mean, mean two ninety nine dollars for this thing. Yeah, that's a $300 jacket. That's a four season jacket. And it's a true four season jacket, I think. Yeah. Um, it's got the thermal liner. It's waterproof. It's got huge vents. Um, so really, I think that's a, a fantastic price point. For it that. is mm -hmm. in the scheme of things, when you're looking at yep. like Revit, at, you know, like yeah. mine at like five, yeah, six hundred, seven hundred, you know, you just toss an extra two, three hundred dollars onto every one of these jackets from Olympia. And you're looking at the Revit line. I think. Yep. Climb. Same yeah, thing. Climb's outrageous. Oh, I love climb stuff though. It's beautiful. Oh, but, but it's outrageous. I'm not spending a thousand dollars on a jacket. No, it's just not going to happen. I got one for the adventure. That's what I ended up with is the climb. Oh. And, uh, I love it. And I'll wear it on street sometimes too. Um, I think Popeye just bought a climb because he was asking. I think he did. He did for street. Yeah. He was asking me and I went through all the stuff. And speaking of, uh, you know, cut, um, the Olympia is an American cut, this Troy yep. jacket. That's one of the things that I told Popeye. He goes, you know, he's asking me. And so I sent him some of the stuff that I'm currently wearing. And of course I sent him the Revit. But like you said, Lurch, and I told him right up front because yeah, he's, he's a cut guy. He's a beefy dude. I said, dude, just to let you know, um, His biceps, yeah, that not rivet's fit. not going to fit him. No, no, yeah. and it, it, yeah, and it, it even for me, it, they're they're a different feel. Now it's Unless completely you go functional three for sizes me. Normally, right. you normally wear. Yep. And I'm okay with yeah. it. Well, um, that's one of the nice things. Like this Olympia jacket has great side adjusters, so you can size mm -hmm. up and still cinch it down yeah. on the side. Right. It's mostly the shoulders yep. with the European right. stuff that you know, and it's a little tighter on me. It fits different than an American. It's okay with me, but it definitely is a completely different feel. So of course yeah. I told Papa, I said, but on my adventure, I got to climb and I really, really like it. And uh, so I, yeah, he ended up going with the climb, but again, yep. yeah, you're jumping categories. Yes, there. you are. They Price are not categories. in the same category. No, they are not. But uh, Olympia has a Adventure 2, I think the model is, that's a fantastic looking jacket too. That's a shorter jacket. Is that um, in the article? It's not. That's okay. one that, um, it's out of stock everywhere. So I didn't uh, end up really considering it. Adventure um, 2, let's see if I we can find it. it here. So that one kind of, you know, um, the stock on these things, I think COVID may be catching up to mm, some of these companies. No, no and, doubt. Yeah, the no supply doubt. chain seems to be a little uh, affected. It definitely um, is. And it's also a transitional period, I think, where some of the, like Alpenstar, um, I noticed a lot of their stuff is on clearance or closeouts or mm. um, something like that. That So the sizes are very limited on them. Um, and sometimes that works to your advantage. Sometimes it doesn't. Right. 
Right. Yeah. Supply chains right now. I uh, have a review ready to go on a helmet, which I'm not going to mention right here yet. Um, but uh, I looked because before I release it, it's affiliate links. And I'm yep. like, I got like nothing. Yep. So I released a different video on jeans the other day. They finally came back in stock. So I'm really having to do that right now. Yep. Like, because uh, sometimes I've released stuff and not checked that. And people are like, you released a video and it's not even available or mm-hmm. we sell it out really quick. Yep. That's happened. They get mad at me. I'm like, I can't, I don't know how much stock they have in, but um, it, it is very true. Yeah, I so. just always waited uh, five weeks on a helmet because it's been out of stock and that may just be my big head size, but um, yeah. yeah, just waiting. Yep. Yep. Stuff. It's definitely catching up a little bit. So, all right. So what else are we looking at here? The, the, uh, as far as what you went over and why you, and so what was the main thing? It was the main with your heated thing that you didn't like the Olympia tree. Yeah, it was the, it was the length and it was the fact that the, the venting's primarily in the chest. And yep. I thought that, you know, wearing a vest over it, uh, wearing my cut over it, it just wasn't going to work out. Okay. Um, and I started looking, thinking about the fact that, um, now ha- riding with heated gear is very different than needing a thermal liner and layers. Um, you know, I mean, when I started doing this, I looked like the Mitchell and man. Mm. In fact, that's one of the next articles is like going from that process of, uh, being the Mitchell and man with layers after layers after layers and stopping and buying hoodies and, uh, polar fleece jackets and whatever to stay warm. Uh, when you got stuck in cold weather, you didn't expect to where you can't move a yeah, leather so jacket with move. the hoodies. Yeah, in you're just, just like, like yeah, I hate that going from there to, um, a t-shirt with your liner under your jacket. And being not just warm, but toasty. And comfy. Um, yeah, it's a whole different world. So you start thinking about the gear you need. You don't really need a four-season jacket because you don't need something with that thermal liner that's really cold, or that's really um, going to keep you toasty. Because when it's really point. cold, you're just going to put your heated liner on, and it's going to take care of that warmth. As long so, as it's a good like wind-stopping yeah, right jacket. Yeah, my liner is. My liner, yeah. is, my liner says it's waterproof and... Um, and windproof. I don't know that I trust the waterproof, just like the nature of the construction. Because when you start looking at a jacket, if it doesn't, if the zipper is just a single YKK zipper and it's not like one of the waterproof zippers mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and there's not a tunnel there to prevent the water from coming in, it's not waterproof. Let's just get real. Right, right. Um, I think my 25 years living in Astoria gave me a mm-hmm. good sense of what waterproof really means. And yeah, if there's right. nothing covering that zipper, it's not waterproof. So, right, like a rain channel. Yeah, some kind type. of a, a a tunnel or a channel or a, a flap over the zipper or whatever. However they're going to do it, there has to be some scheme to keep the water from penetrating that zipper under high wind. Okay. It just has to be there. And it's not there, so I know it's not waterproof. And those are the kind of things I was looking for in jackets is to make sure that it had that feature, that um, the cuffs sealed up well. Um, that's another one of the, the struggles I have with my electric um, gloves is that they are not, my heated gloves are very narrow gauntlet. So um, they don't go under coats well. They don't go over coats mm, well. So yeah. trying to figure out that interface there was interesting too. And by the way, for the audience listening, at the end of the episode, we are going to tell you, I do want you to tell which jacket you okay. So I want to say, go through all these and why yep. and the problems. And then we will go in and reveal the great reveal. Then I better of, look for the name of what remember. Brad eventually uh, went for. Um, so yeah, that'll be, that'll be a, a reason to stick around. Cause I'm curious. I actually don't know. Apparently he wrote an article, but we've been busy. So I haven't even looked at it. He's putting them in the queue. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll show you that lurch when he puts those in the queue. No, actually that, um, that article's not up there yet because I have to write in the reins first. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I gotta, that's what I gotta you're know saying. if it actually is waterproof. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Well, we'll still reveal it, but we won't be able to tell you whether it's waterproof or not today. But uh, we will. We will reveal it and let you know what why he uh, got what he got and, and what he went for. So let's do this real quick. Are you searching for the easiest and quickest detachable luggage system for your motorcycle? Rick Rack. Rick Rack. That's just what you're looking for. Forget all those frustrating straps and bungee cords that can come loose and slap your paint. Slap it. <laughs> Check out one of Rick Rack's awesome quick attach luggage systems. <laughs> this father and son team has designed something special that you can't find anywhere else. Yep, these guys ride so they truly understand the need of bikers. The Rick Rack quick attach system is strong, durable, and secure with a lockable system. 
Also, check out their full line of quality touring bags to accompany your detach, your quick detach system. Once you go Rick Rack, you'll never go back. Rick Rack. But what are you waiting for, bike hogs? Head on over to Law Abiding Biker Store and check out our full line of Rick Rack systems and bags. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store. Go to the stow. You know, I have to say, like, I I strapped that box of speaker pod on the back of mm-hmm. my bike. And as I'm strapping it down, all I could think of is, don't slap your paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, stuck yeah. in your head. I'm sorry, yes, Brad. it is. I'm really sorry about it's that. It's good, Stock. It's working, then. <laughs> yeah, it is working. It is. All right, let's... Uh, we're doing good here, and we're going to go over a few other jackets of consideration um, that Brad looked at, and then again at the end we will reveal the winner um, for Brad. And again, that's going to be different for each person, but you may have some of the same preferences or things you're looking for. So, um, the four season thing uh, is a good point that you brought up. You know about well, if you have a heated vest liner, mine are still four season, um, and I still wear the heated liner under right. under them. But it is a way that you can downgrade just a little bit do yep. you really need and it opens up other options to you you know it right. spreads that um um it like i said in the article that the number of jackets becomes much larger when you start looking which isn't necessarily good for narrowing it down <laughs> right but it might be good for finding an option that you you know is attractive is something that um fits more of the needs that you have like the arm and the the venting and those kind of things so yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. All right. What else did you uh, consider? Um, you know, I think price range was huge that, um, you know, when I expanded to the three um, season, two to three season vent uh, or two to three season jacket, it went from $59 to $1,500. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a price mm-hmm. range to mm-hmm. think about. So, yeah. you know, you, you can take that, that price and just start moving it down because 1500 is not on the table. Mm-hmm. Thousands not on the table. <laughs> so you just kind of keep taking it down to where you're comfortable and then you can do some sorting and try to find things. But, and then you're really looking for where are the vents, um, what kind of, uh, you know, how heavy is it? Mm-hmm. Um, does it have, you know, how high does the collar come up? Because, you know, the interface with the jacket, uh, the helmet's important because yeah. you don't want to have to wear a gator or something else up there um, in your truly waterproof jacket. Uh, you want something that's going to come up and butt up against the bottom of your helmet. So um, it's just kind of all stuff you got to think about. Think about how you ride. Think you're about what you ride with. Think about what other gear you have um, that you're wearing with it and how you want your interface with the bike to be. Mm-hmm. And you're, I'm just reading your article here, uh, hitting some key points here. Um, so the five, oh, it, yeah. So you said now, <laughs> yeah. So Revzil, you were doing some cert, uh, filtering now, 137, 137 choices ranging from 5095 batch jacket at 59. Yeah. You said that to which he's talking about the climb badlands pro jacket, which is a badass yeah, jacket. A beautiful jacket. Oh but my God. We got to look at that. $1,500. It better be. It ought to cook you breakfast. Yeah. No doubt. Um, let's see, which one is it? That's it right there. It that came down in price. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry. It's over the A3. There you go. Oh, right here. The 1500. Yep. That is a sexy jacket. I'm telling you, but, and I got it up browser mode for the, uh, mm-hmm. audience that, mm-hmm. patrons mm-hmm. watching it. It is. I'm telling you, that's one of my favorite brands of stuff. Now that I've worn on adventure, it is an amazing, but damn, uh, I don't know that that's on the table. Uh, I, in fact, I know that's not on the table for me. But, well, you know, uh, this, I started looking at some of the climb gear and it's interesting because they are more modular in that they don't try to do everything in one jacket may, necessarily. Right. You're going to have layers of, you know, your base layer and your armor may not be in your jacket. It may be in something that's under your jacket, depending on which jacket you're looking at. And, um, and they're using some very nice uh, D three O armor that's super thin. And mm. Actually, I don't I don't know that they're using D three O. I think it might be some proprietary thing that they're using right now. Um, but I totally uh, would look at yeah, it is D three O D three O Aero Pro CE Level Two yeah. Shoulder and Elbow Armor, which yeah. is available separately. And I may end up buying that armor because the armor is not that expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, it's right. only a small step up from your normal D three O. Right, it certainly is much lighter, better ventilated. Uh, very flexible. Um, so that's yeah, certainly something to look at. Yeah. 
Okay, I can get stuck on that. It's a good looking <laughs> jacket. I, I don't know why I like the style of climb stuff. So yeah. um, they do all kinds of snowmobile stuff. They're huge in the snowmobile. And Big all in that snowmobile. Kind of, you can't go wrong with it if you if you got fifteen hundred dollars uh, sitting around. Then go. Uh, you're for gonna it. get nice quality. You won't be disappointed. But uh, I don't know that it's worth as much as they obviously charge for it. It's one of those kind of brands where you're yeah. paying a lot for the name. Well, but you're also paying because they use Gore-Tex, actually. Yep, you're paying correct. for that name as well, and they're one of the few people actually using Gore-Tex. That's true, my adventure jacket. Thing. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, good so, point. There's a lot of reasons for that price. It's all YKK zippers, like the waterproof zippers, not just the YKK zipper. It's all Gore-Tex, not, you know, Dry Star or whatever somebody's naming their particular um, waterproof so they're they're the gold standard and they're using gold standard products in their in their gear mm-hmm. get the old yep. credit card out yeah go for it all right what else did we look at here well i guess you know like the bottom line is it came down to just a couple of different jackets um one was the icon stormhawk um good looking jacket let's take a look at that yep. bad boy the icon storm it's more of a shell yeah um, they got the, pants look at these yep CE pants. Hmm. Okay. Decent looking jacket. Um, definitely in the running. Um, yeah, it's four way stretch, so it's going to be comfortable. Uh, if it's form fitting, it's okay. You know, cause it's not going to bind up on you no matter what you're wearing. Um, good venting. Those, uh, vents on the top of the arms are, they open huge mm-hmm. and, uh, seemed like it would be a good venting scheme. Icon's a very well known brand. Yep. Decent stuff. At a price point of three hundred fifteen, so that's uh, better than the uh, fifteen hundred for sure. Yep. Okay, what and else then, you look uh, at? The Harley Ridgeway jacket, which um, is actually a pretty decent jacket. It's uh, um, it's got very narrow sleeves. Uh, it has extended thumb holes for the the arm to transition into your gloves that are nice. Do you I, like that? I do. Do you? Yeah. I've never been a fan of it. I don't know why. Maybe it's the feeling. I don't like things around my thumb. Yeah. And but that's just me. So I was just wondering if I, you don't. I do mind find it. that there's a difference in my hands. Like my right hand, it's just fine. My left hand, I've got arthritis in my yeah. thumb, and it bothers that side a little more. Um, so there's a little difference there, but it's a good looking jacket. Good venting under the arms. What's um, this thing waterproof, called? Waterproof. The HD Ridgeway. Is it the Harley? It's the Ridgeway Two. Yep. Ridgeway. To jacket, I, I'm not familiar with it. I don't look. Uh, let me know if you see it. Yep, that's it right this there. This is it right front. here. Yep, 195. Yep, it's good price. Something with it Harley does not stamped include, on it. It doesn't include any um, armor, so the armor you have to purchase separately. Okay. Um, it's got a zip off hood. I hate. So yeah, I don't know that's why weird. But he puts hoods on motorcycle jackets. But yeah, you although can't, I did, There was one company that actually had a. a a helmet a hood you could put under your helmet. It was actually designed to wear under your helmet. Your mileage may vary, but um, I still don't think I'd like that. Yeah, not a fan of that, yep. but good looking jacket. Yeah, it's nice. Um, it's got a waterproof pocket on the chest. You can it's get got it in good small. venting under the end. <laughs> Brad, yeah. it's perfect for you. You can get it in small. The, the <laughs> sizing is, or the availability on this jacket is all over the map. Yeah, they're sold out. Um, on the small. Harley website, they are, but I think Utah Harley Davidson has oh, it. Yeah. Um, House of Harley has it. Um, some of the the larger dealers have good availability okay. in it. So interesting. Okay, so that All one's right. good. Um, what was the other one? Speed and Strength. Speed and Strength's Fame and Fortune, which is kind of a um, you know, it's an entry level jacket, I think, uh, but it's a nice looking jacket. Um, and where the Speed is and Strength, uh, Fame and Fortune. It was Fame there. and Fortune yeah, on the right, far the right, oh, right yeah. there. Yep. All right, we're going to put it in browser mode for you all here so you can see this thing. Yep. And it's kind of a casual looking jacket. Looks like, um, you know, other like waterproof jackets that a guy might be wearing. Pretty, yeah, straight, uh, standard looking, really. Yep. Hmm. You can get it in some alternate colors. Um, it's got decent the, venting. Got the arm vents that yep. you're looking for. Yeah. Yep. 199. Okay. All when, right. you, when you start getting away from the four season, it really starts opening things up because sure. the, um, the waterproofing is not as difficult. You don't have to have it, you know, that direct vent uh, issues tough to do with a waterproof jacket. So um, when you're not trying to do thermal rainproof and um, summer venting, it's um, uh, I think it's a much easier jacket for people to design. So there's. Yeah. And what would you the say? This is really a two season. Too. 
Yeah, probably. Um, the arms vent really well. Um, and it's probably two, three. I mean, the heat of summer, it's probably not going to be great. Um, if you're using a, a heated jacket though, or, uh, you know, your heated liners, mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. It's a four season jacket. Yeah. Right. Cause you don't need it for the insulation. You need it to block the wind and that's it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you think it yep. definitely opens your options up. Yeah. Cause I've never yeah, thought about it that really, way. Really. It changes the game. Yep. I don't have to have bulky. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Hmm. What else do we look at here? Anything else catch your uh, eye? That's pretty much the, the finalists right there. Oh, the climb to car line. We didn't go over that. That's oh, yeah, a great yeah. line too. That is a good line, but it's, um, 309. Yeah. It's, it's not terribly affordable. Uh, I looked at these expensive. for adventure too. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember what it was about these that I, it was really interesting. Um, it's designed for off-road, so it doesn't have the armor in it. Um, I think it's part of it. Um, the ventilation is crazy on it. That's interesting because my off-road the, uh, climb comes with armor. You can take it in and out, of course, yeah. like most, but I wear the armor. But this um, is one that's designed for the armor to be worn, I think, in a different layer. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm tracking. Instead of uh, into the pockets of the yep. jacket, right? Yeah. You can wear the, the but shirts. But I don't think armor. it's really got the slight abrasion that a lot of the current climb gear has either. Mm, interesting. I mean, just looking at it, it says it's 600D um, nylon, but you're not getting the like multiple layers on the impact areas. And Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Very popular jacket, though, when you say yep. the car line. A lot of people know about that stuff. So, all right. And it seems a line that would really come over into the Harley world pretty well. It's not, I mean, right. you can get it in subdued colors and it's waist length. and Yeah, yeah, that. true, true. And I like the way, uh, like I said uh, earlier, climb, I like the way it fits. American Cut, yep. it's a little bit looser, a little bit baggier. So guys your size are going to be okay with it. Yeah, like it, they're out of stock. Of, you got medium, large, XL. Yeah. But yeah. So many jackets I looked at were... Um, uh-huh. I mean, sizing is just really tough right now. And mm-hmm. I, I really think it's that COVID. I mean, we've all been spending more money than we should have. Mm-hmm. And a lot of factories well, yeah. were closed. That yeah, was the not, problem. You not know? traveling, not going out to restaurants. Yeah. So if your money's still coming in, you're going to spend it on outdoor activities. Yes. The motorcycles, you, which are one the of the things those. you love. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Anything else that you uh, looked at or lurched that you want to, uh, talk about as far as progressive riding gear on that that we didn't mention not i are you sure yeah all right let's do this real quick and then we'll do uh the big reveal the big reveal the big reveal on what brad picked hey bike all searching for new and exciting motorcycle products zero 3d has products you dream about for your bike check out their wide variety of innovative products for the harley davidson and honda goldwing motorcycles zero 3d's got your back with chrome Black parts, lighting, and other comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding for an easy installation. That equals less time installing, more time riding. You know how we love that. Mm-hmm. Zero 3D has a design team with over 40 years' experience with a passion for design and innovation. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. They pride themselves on great customer service. Got a question? Get in touch with them. Email sales at zero 3D.com. Give them a call 715-808-0027. Check at your local Hardy or Honda dealership and ask for Zero or Gold Strike parts. A new leader has emerged. So check out Zero 3D's custom line of Gold Strike products for the all new gold. Honda Gold Wings. Better yet, help support us. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store and check out our full line of Zero 3D products. There you go. Mmm. Mmm. A lot to talk about. I could go over a whole bunch of other, uh, we're not in the interest of time, gear, but uh, I've done some reviews. I I will eventually do a review of the climb jacket I'm wearing and some other gear too on adventure because really it can be worn. A lot of the stuff can really be, I mean, there are some things between adventure and street that are that can be rather specific, but quite honestly... Kind of comes Most down to of style it, in the it end. It does. Yeah. And of course, adventure. Look and style. I will say, I would not want my Revit Horizon jacket. I knew that right away. Now I wore it a couple trips before I could get figure out what I wanted. Uh, adventure riding, you need to, you're using a lot more physical abilities right. and you're all over on your bike. You need something like the climb that's looser fitting. It's much more athletic you know, using a lot, a lot mm-hmm. more athletic mm-hmm. capabilities. So I didn't, I would not want the Revit European cut 
for that. <laughs> um, so there are some differences, but when it you comes look to the, like your tribe, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I could take that climb jack and I have and bump it right over the street and you'd never know right. the difference. That's a nice thing about that. But so, but there are some, so you have to be careful there, but I just wanted to mention that, that, um, a lot of these can, can, uh, uh, you know, basically cross over to adventure or street. There we go. Drum roll. Brr, brr. I don't even have a drum roll. Lurch. That seems like a the basic big sound reveal. effect. To get brr, it should. Up. I really yeah. should do the drum roll, dude. The great reveal. So Brad is going to um, tell us what he decided on. I'll pull a picture up of it. I don't know. I'm just as excited as you guys. I hope it's not like a complete disappointment. You've actually like, seen like, it. It was out in the shop all oh, day today. Oh, see, I didn't even pay attention. I wore it in. Mm, I didn't Lurch pay attention. Lurch already knows because he's I saw it. I touched it. Bullshit. You were supposed to be surprised too with me. <laughs> no, I moved it because I needed to use the uh, vice. Oh, uh, gotcha. On the vice. Gotcha. Yeah. So I hope it's not like a, quiet. like a Walmart sweatshirt. You no, went to Walmart not at all. got a yeah. damn right. jacket. After all that stress, I just went JC and got Penny's. it. Yeah, JC yeah. Penney's. Yeah, JCPenney's. Yeah, nice. Nice. All right. Brad, let me, I got the search uh, bar up. So should, I went should, with, should um, I go to, it's uh, up in one of those tabs already. It's the Harley Davidson Ridgeway. Two no jacket. shit. You yeah. did, huh? All with all of, Out that, of all that, I ended up going to my local dealer that had it in stock and uh, bought that. And the reason is. Yes, please. Cause that would not. I know. Have been my guess, Brad. I, I was like, I, it just happened to be there when I was in the store looking for something else. I went in to order my helmet and uh, I tried this jacket on. I like the fit. Um, the sleeves are super narrow at the gauntlet. There's no zipper. There's no Velcro tabs. It's just a nice Lurch, slim. Lurch, go get this thing, will you, while he's yeah. talking. Can you do that? I got to <laughs> yeah. see this. Yeah, it's a nice slim wrist. So it fits inside the gauntlet of my um, heated gloves. It, um, and it has that, um, that extended thumb hole that transitions mm. well between the two. Um, it's got armor pockets that I've got the armor in. Um, it's got, it good came with venting. the armor. No, it did not come with the armor, what? uh, but I had armor. I just pulled it out of my scorpion shirt. I'm tracking. Brought, yeah. Uh, tossed it in there for now. That's a nice thing about set. armor. Yeah. Yep. And then, um, the, uh, the underarm vents are fantastic. In fact, I forgot to close them the other morning. It was like 72 when I left work the day before and 28 the next morning when I rode to work. And I can tell you my heated liner is windproof. Yeah. Because right. I noticed it, but it wasn't horrible. Okay. Well, then, <laughs> but yeah, it was moving good. a lot of air inside. So yeah, it's a, it's a good quality jacket. It uh, checked all the boxes. The pricing was good. The styling's good. Um, if you're looking at it from the front has just that little name tape that says Harley Davidson, not really crazy. The back's got the big bar and shield. Uh, the first version of this jacket had the big Willie G skull on the back, um, which is not my favorite logo, but, um, yeah, I like it. Big reflective. Uh, it's got reflective all over the arms, all over the back. Um, yeah, it just, it checked the boxes. This is where pictures online no matter how good of pictures you take. It looks completely different. Totally it? fucking different. Yep. Yep. And I mean, that when I looked at that on this picture, that's why I wanted you to get it, Lurch. Thank you, by the way. Yeah, no problem. If you're watching the video, uh, if you're a patron member, this is in your account. Of course, you're seeing it in video and audio. I'm holding up this thing. Um, when, I, when you handed it to me, it's freaking heavy. I don't mean in a bad way. Yeah. Because that... And it I don't looks know like if a casual it look, jacket. It looks more like a sweatshirt. It looks like a damn yep. sweatshirt or windbreaker. Yeah. Yep. I am so. That's why I kind of blew it off when you um, talked about. It. I was like, why I wouldn't have thought you would went with that. Yeah, I don't know if I would have bought it had you not had it in person based on the website. Okay, but it had the the severe advantage of I tried it on. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, it, I there's something still to be it. said I about feel that. The fabric and mm -hmm. yep. I would think that was a throwover windbreaker almost light coat. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, yep. I know you can read the description, but, but like, look at the zipper on that thing. It's got yeah. that zipper. It's the little zipper with the tunnel between the two and, and they could do a good job of describing it, but yeah, their pictures are horrible. No. Yeah. Now you could read that description all day and still go, that's yep. just too thin for me. I want something thicker. This is a, this is a solid jacket. Yeah. People, I'm not going to lie to you. So it clearly, 
um, yeah, that's what I'm, it is. There's still something to be said about being able, you know, I know we do a lot of online yeah. shopping and I get it. Um, but yeah, I would never buy this because of, uh, online. I would, I, I see why you did once you saw it. Um, yeah, it's, a the hood's laying in a bin. It'll probably never yeah, get reattached. Right. Mm-hmm. It's got weight to it. Um, it'll take a slide. Yeah, it'll take a slide. I'm looking, it's got the, like you say for rain, you haven't tested it yet. But it says it's waterproof. Yep. Um, does it have a thing to protect the zipper here? Yeah, it, that's a dual zipper. So it oh, zips yeah, yeah, inside yeah. and then over it. So. I'm tracking. So it's got the basically the the uh, rain channel, yep. like we talked about. And you've got your armor in it. It's got Which some is reinforced shoulders. sometimes to zip up. Mm. Yeah, right. You keep grabbing yeah, the wrong sure. zipper. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And zipping the, we're trying to zip the inside. But the the FXRG jacket was even worse because there was a zipper for the rain liner, a zipper for the thermal liner, a zipper for the Mm -hmm. leather Mm -hmm. front. And yeah, this is nice for big guys like you. It's got gussets, uh, basically gusseted shoulders. So you get the extra room, you know what I mean? For the shoulders. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. Yeah. When you're reaching forward for the bars or when you choke up on them. Yeah. How's the, uh, seal around when you zip it all the way up and oh, it's you seal fantastic. it, 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 it butts up, up to your helmet well it comes up the very bottom of my chin um pushing my beard forward and comes right up to the bottom of the helmet yeah outside couple outside pockets yeah i see why you got it uh when you saw it for yep. sure did you you thought the same thing as me too oh it's got a it's got an oh another button you can actually oh that's for the oh, hood. that's for the hood yeah that's for the hood okay all right yeah. Well, now, that's another have thing I vents? like is that there's, uh, it does not have any front vents. So it has no it's venting. It's all under the arms. Okay. Okay. Um, but I'm looking, they move is there zippers air. under here, Brad? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. There's two zippers. I missed that. Okay. So under the arms here. Yeah. I'm tracking and it's got nice, uh, I forget what they call this, but it's got the waterproof rubber yep. uh, stuff over the zippers. Is it fairly easy to get? You probably haven't had to unzip it, but you can Unzipping reach it. Unzipping it while riding, you can get it about halfway. Yeah. Then you're not going to get it the rest of the half because it's just it's bent in an awkward position. Right. Yeah, that's a lot of jackets yep. are, are like that. So venting there, no front venting, but um, yeah. All right, bro. And when you're, when you're riding and you've got your arms up and out, those vents are very efficient because you're, you're pulling that up away from your right. body. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially with you with the bars up over the, yep. yeah, fairing straight out. Um, no, okay, I'm just making sure. So this is no zip out liner. Nope. It just is as it is. Um, would you say, so this jacket, just finishing up, I know we're going long, but um, so this jacket to me, I like this a lot. Um, yeah. I, I, I see why you bought it. I think, but I wouldn't, this one, uh, you, this is, you're going to be stripping this thing. If it's gets, 100 degrees, yeah, I'll take it Okay, you'll wear it up to 100, you think? Uh, I'll probably be honest. Because it's I'll thick. I'll pull it at 85. Maybe. Right. Yeah. It's a thick jacket. And yep. and with and, and uh, again, just a, a fair but, review. It's, it doesn't yeah. have front vents. If I take off in that weather, I'm probably taking just a riding shirt. Right. You're um, going to be in a riding. Like, that's yep. what I do. Like, yep. I'm going to go to my, you know, a rest and redemption or something yep. that I'm going to be wearing rather than my coat. So right. that's fair. That's fair. Um yeah, so you rode up here in this and yep. had your heated vest. Uh, no, uh, well, it was a nice have, day. That's yeah. right. It was a nice but day. I rode to work with it. In, um, actually, that wasn't too bad that day. Tuesday, it was 28 when I rode to work. Yeah. And that jacket and my thermal liner. Did just fine. Yep. And this is the, yeah, this is the thumb, the cuffs, how the cuffs come yep. down. You can put your thumb through it. Um, I use that sometimes, sometimes not. Right, right. Yeah. My short gloves, it just doesn't interface well with those, but it does pretty well with my heated gloves. And I can see that kind of fit would fit you well. Yep. You know, and not be restrictive, yep. so to speak. Lurch, you have anything to say on that jacket now that I've held it up? I mean, oh, well, besides just, what I already said, like, yeah, I can't what? say much more other than looking at Harley's picture on the website. It looks it's more trash. like a sweatshirt. Yep. Um, <laughs> it does oh, not look like the jacket that we're looking at now. And it, it, it it's just bad photography, I think. But um, the, the nice thing is that uh, you can, you know, if, if you're an average size guy like you, you can buy just about anything. But yeah. if you're a bigger guy, you've got to try it on. And it's nice to be able to go down to your local Harley dealership and put that kind of stuff on. It's just, it's hard to find 
local stores anymore where you can just go yeah. try on Revit or Climb or whatever. A lot yeah, of that, even yeah. like Cycle Gear is two hours yeah. away from me. So I'm, I'm getting right. through just a pain. The nice thing is, um, you know, hopefully the law abiding biker store eventually will be carrying a lot of clothing and helmets and stuff. We just aren't there yet. We don't have time, but, um, the nice thing is most policies are, um, but it is nice. You can try get them, them try them, them on. Yeah, don't take the of, tags off. Don't actually wear it. In the ass, so it is, I agree. It's Boxing nice. It up, tracking. Three days there, three days. Back. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I ordered that Revit jacket through RevZilla, put it on it's too tight. You know, I put it right back on, shipped it back and they gave me a full refund. No mm-hmm. big deal, but, but yeah, I get it. It's a, yep. you know, by the time it gets here and gets back, it's a week gone. Now I'm looking for another one to try on. It's just nice to go into a, a store and, and feel it, touch feel it, it yeah. smell it. it on. And especially if you have multiples, right, right. to where you, a rack where, yeah, there's something mm-hmm. to be said about that. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. What else you got? They suckered me. They suckered you. HD. He paid the Harley tax. But honestly, but for that price, yeah, time. I would feel yeah. good. Mm-hmm. I that's a it's a it's a really interesting jacket at mm-hmm. an interesting price. That's fair, I think. For yeah. now that I see it, I can't really say that that's a crazy Harley tax on that. So um, you could have got it for 156 at Shop Utah Harley, though. Uh, no, that's oh, different. different. That's yeah, fleece fleece jacket, fleece, which is mind. a whole different thing. Look at their copying yeah. brand in the Rest and Redemptions. Harley's good at that. All right. Anyways, any last parting comments? Brad or Lurch on progressive gear because we could keep going for this. For I just think it's really important to think about what you really want. Think about what, how you actually ride, not just how the rest of your drive looks. And and we all want the best, right? Yep. Like, and you're always like, and then you're like, realize like, I don't really need that. I yep. get caught into that sometimes. Like that's overkill for what I'm really doing. You yep. know? I think Brad really hit it on this one as he's looking to what type of, riding he's going to do and what kind of gear he's going to ride with he's wearing a cut so the chest vents don't mean much to him he's got heated gear so it doesn't have to be super thick he can put his as long as it stops the wind and stops the rain he can put a heated liner on her so really consider your type of riding you do the type of gear you're wearing and put that all together and you'll be able to find something that fits your bill and that this one fits the bill for for brad for me yeah your mileage may vary Nice. Mm-hmm. And on that bombshell. I know Brad will get back to us after he tested in the rain. Almost tested it today. Um, yeah. I was uh, actually excited. It was supposed to be right. raining yesterday and today. And it's got a little drizzle yeah. this morning. Yeah. 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 Let me know. Yep. Um, obviously, we'll, if it leaks or something, but I don't think it will. I, I think it's uh, I think it's set up well and it's got the zippers and stuff. And if they're claiming it's waterproof, I'm certain it is. Yeah. So there you go. All right. We love our patron members. We want to get to know you better we want you to become a patron member get in the private facebook group maybe end up in the law-abiding biker studio right here like brad who knows it's possible it's yeah yeah exactly but uh for whatever reason the only way you can support us is through a flat donation of course we never bought at a flat donation and uh, we want to thank the following people lynn santuoso of barrington new hampshire substantial donation thank you so much michael Lissick of Yorba Linda, California, and Rodney Cariso, substantial donation, lawbitingbiker.com forward slash donate is how they did that. And we thank you so very much for those flat donations. Helps put a little fuel in the law abiding biker gas tank so we can keep running on down the road. There you go, guys. And of course, affiliate links to all the gear that Brad put in the article. Just go to the article also put the article in the show notes uh, or you can just search for it but uh, one of the recent articles and Brad's going to have some more articles coming out um, they're in the queue got to go through them but uh, we'll be releasing those dripping them slow drip over time alright guys you know they make a medicine for that I know that's what I was going to say I almost went down there it sounds like a bad VD bro All right. like lunch mm-hmm, exactly yeah thanks so much guys for being here and all you patrons getting it in video format in the back of your accounts and all that. Of course, mm, call to action, guys. Don't get stranded, bikeaholics. Get hooked up with our Cruise Tools RTH3 Roll-Up Travel Toolkit for Hardy-Davidson and American-Made V-Twin Motorcycles. We also got a version on the website for Indians mm-hmm. and Metrics. We've been ramping that up. Big Daddy Kane is responsible for getting all those extra toolkits that will uh, meet the needs of your particular ride. Why get stranded and have your bike towed over a small repair? This quality-made toolkit has everything you need for a roadside emergency repair, tested and used 
as seen in our documentary films right here by the Law Abiding Biker Crew. Yep, has our stamp of approval or mushroom stamp of approval. Mushroom stamp. I knew it was coming. Get it already. That's the Cruise Tools RTH3 kit. Yep, brought it right to the Law Abiding Biker Store just for you. Nothing but five-star reviews. Big Daddy Kane and Goat. I still have that. Yep. Goat, who Goat. run the Law Abiding Biker Store, have them in stock, ready to ship to you right freaking now. Tote Goat. Tote <laughs> Goat, dude. Just fun to say. I just want to do a uh, another uh, butt buffer commercial. Where you? What did you say? The butt buffer. Butt buffer. Hang on, we got to do it. We're going to bring the music to it again. Butt buffer. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> We had a little stereo action going. I said butt buffer, and he said buff your butt. Yeah, uh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Keeping it uh, lively for all you guys out there. Thanks for listening. If you're just, uh, obviously, we love the regular listening audience, too, in podcast format. Thanks so much. 